One of my favorite things about summer is the farmer's market and today I'm taking you guys along with me on my weekend as I did a big farmer's market haul and we are going to be making some delicious homemade from scratch food. Let's go. Good morning guys, how are you? Happy Saturday. I am just headed downtown to the farmer's market. I have not been yet this year and actually I don't even think I went once last year. I'm hoping that they have some decent produce down there, maybe some corn, tomatoes, strawberries. I don't know, you can't beat the farmer's market tomatoes. If I could find like a bunch of them, I could make some salsa or marinara sauce, but we'll see. It's later in the morning, it's like 10.30. So sometimes when you go later, all of the good produce is like picked over, but we'll see, we'll see what they have. Um, if not, I guess I can always go next weekend too. So um, right now I'm just at Dunkin' getting a coffee, iced coffee, pumpkin cold brew. I don't know, whatever I got. <laughs> all right, let's go see what they have at the farmer's market. All right, so let me show you what I got. I did get some eggs, farm fresh eggs. Um, I got some eggplant, I think the other one's over here. There's a recipe I want to try for eggplant rollatini, so I got two of those. I also got a couple of big cucumbers, some poblano peppers, and then I got red jalapenos and green jalapenos. I also stopped at the grocery store just to get a few things to make what I wanted to make with this stuff, so chives, dill um, some strawberries and some chopped spinach that i've been thawing that's for the eggplant rollatini some fresh green beans i also got some of these cinnamon rolls they look super good this huge watermelon so i'm excited to cut into this um some honey i got these grapes at the grocery store i need to wash up 12 years of corn so i need to shuck these um a bunch of tomatoes so i got four of these really large tomatoes some green tomatoes right fried green tomatoes i don't know i'm gonna make those tonight we'll see some zucchini some kale a couple green peppers and then these are some smaller red tomatoes i kind of want to make some marinara sauce and then these are little cherry tomatoes that i got as well so i was actually really happy with everything that they had a ton of produce um, I can't remember how much I spent. I think I ended up spending around 60 bucks or something like that, maybe a little bit more. Um, but definitely not bad for all of this produce and good stuff. I am really excited to let you guys know that today's video is sponsored by BetterHelp and the reason why I love working with them so much, I've worked with them here before on my channel, is that I have actually used BetterHelp for therapy for almost the past two years. I actually started using BetterHelp after my mom passed away unexpectedly a couple of years ago. And it has been so helpful for me to be able to talk to a therapist, not just about like bad things that have happened or traumatic things that have happened, even if you don't have, you know, any mental health issues, it is just so helpful to be able to talk to a neutral person and talk through all of the things that you have going on in your life, bounce ideas off, get help, I just really love BetterHelp because it's super convenient for me to use. You guys know that I travel a lot for work. I'm super busy with kids and my job and YouTube. And the fact that I can attend therapy sessions from the comfort of my own house is like revolutionary to me. I mean, I have attended lots of therapy over the years. And just the fact that I don't even have to leave my house that I can meet with my therapist over a video call is just so helpful to me. And I do think that it helps increase access for those that need mental health services and maybe they aren't around an area where there are a lot of therapists, BetterHelp is a great option. BetterHelp's mission is to make therapy more affordable and more accessible. And this is a really important mission because finding a therapist can be really hard and actually finding a therapist that you get along well with can be even more difficult. One of the like unhelpful thoughts that I always have and that I talk to my therapist about, that's really a ridiculous thought, but maybe some of you guys can, uh, resonate with this is that I often tell myself that my life isn't hard enough or that I don't have that big of problems um, and like I don't need therapy I don't deserve therapy like there are lots of people out there who have it worse than you why do you think you deserve therapy okay if you think this this is an unhelpful thought don't don't think about it like that 
I personally think anyone who is a human, regardless of what mental health diagnosis that you may have, or if you have no mental health issues, I think that therapy is beneficial for everyone. We all have stuff as humans that we have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. And like I said, having that neutral party there to be able to vent to and bounce ideas off of is just so helpful. I have also found it very helpful um, to use BetterHelp because you can actually um, chat back and forth with your therapist. You can schedule online. It makes it super convenient. And my therapist also is able to send me worksheets and things like that to complete um, that have been really helpful for me, honestly. Like I'll complete them and then we'll talk about them at my next session. And it has really helped me shift my thinking in some important areas. It's super easy to sign up and get matched with a therapist. I'll have a link in my description box. You can go to betterhelp.com slash Jen Chapin. And when you use my link, it obviously helps support my channel. So thank you for that. But also when you use my link, it gives you 10% off your first month of BetterHelp. So you can connect with a therapist and see if it helps you. The other thing that I've experienced before with seeking therapy is that you don't always kind of mesh or get along with the first therapist that you're matched with. Sometimes it can feel a little bit like dating. So if for some reason you don't mesh or get along with that person, you can change to a different therapist at any time for no charge. You don't have to worry about insurance coverage or who's in your network or anything like that. So if you're struggling or you just need someone to talk to, I highly highly recommend BetterHelp. Like I said, it has made it so much easier for me to be able to get good quality therapy. And make sure you use my link in the description box below. It's betterhelp.com slash Jen Chapin. And thank you again to BetterHelp for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so I wanted to start out by cutting up this massive watermelon. Uh, this is probably the largest watermelon that I have ever purchased. And uh, we didn't even actually get all of this eaten, but you can see like how perfect and juicy and sweet and red it is on the inside. This is just so much better, obviously, than the melons that you can most of the time get from the grocery store. So maybe next time when I go, I'll try to find a little bit of a smaller one, but it was really good. And then I also got some corn. So I wanted to go ahead and shuck this. Um, I will be making some corn on the cob with our dinner tonight and then I also used some of it for some corn salsa. Typically what I do when I buy uh, like a bunch of corn like this is I will go ahead and shuck it and rinse it off and put it in a Ziploc bag and then at that point it will stay good in the fridge for about a week. Um, it kind of just depends but if you leave it out on the counter in the husk it will tend to kind of get gross so don't do that or you'll probably waste it. But I love this produce washing basin that I got from Timu. It fits corn perfectly. It has a really large capacity so I went ahead and rinsed that off. And then these are the little cherry tomatoes that I got from the market as well. So I washed those and I'm just taking some of the stems off and putting them in one of these produce storage containers. I really like these. Um, I know I've talked about them here before on my channel, but they're pretty inexpensive on Amazon. So I can link them down below. Um, later on in the video, I'm also going to be making some caprese salad with these cherry tomatoes. So that was a perfect use of those. Um, for dinner tonight, I am going to make some baked barbecue chicken. And then I had some tater tots in the freezer to use up. And obviously I had my green tomatoes that I got from the farmer's market. So I thought it would be fun to make some fried green tomatoes. I'm just making a breading station here with some disposable pans that I had on hand. So easier cleanup. I've got flour, eggs, and breadcrumb. And then I'm going to go ahead and slice up my tomatoes now it's been a while since i've made fried green tomatoes like a couple years i think i actually sliced these tomatoes way too thick and it makes me want to have a redo <laughs> because because they were way too thick but we still eat them anyway okay so this is the corn that I washed. I'm just putting some of that into boiling water so that will cook up. And then for the fried green tomatoes, I just um, dredged them in the flour and then the egg and then some panko breadcrumb. So super simple. And I did season them with salt and pepper. I have just a little bit of canola oil in the bottom of this pan that I am just shallow frying those in. They did turn out good and flavorful. Um, we ate them with some ranch dressing that I spiced up with some spices. And obviously Adam really likes fried green tomatoes, so he didn't complain, but 
<laughs> Next time, I will definitely cut them a little bit thinner. So for dinner, we had tater tots along with this baked barbecue chicken that I made and some buttered corn on the cob. So that turned out really good for a nice summer supper. And this chicken I baked in the oven turned out really good. Okay, so this is the following morning and I just wanted to show you guys what I cooked for breakfast. I'm actually gonna use some of the leftover tater tots. So I'm taking one of these red jalapenos that I got the day before and I'm just mincing that up and putting it into a skillet with a little bit of butter and vegetable oil. I also cut up some um, green pepper and some onion and I'm getting that into the skillet as well. This is going to be kind of like a scramble and I'm going to use some of the leftover tater tots. Uh, if you guys have never fried up leftover tater tots with your eggs, I highly recommend it. This is what I made for Adam on this particular morning. And then I also had some pre-cooked bacon in the fridge. I thought that would be perfect to kind of just toss in there and crisp up with the hash browns and the veggies. And then I'm going to mix up some eggs. So this is just a couple of eggs with salt and pepper and a little bit of hot sauce and some milk. So I scooted everything over to the side and I'm just adding the eggs into my skillet and I'll cook those slowly until everything comes together. And this turned out really good. I always tell you guys like, I don't necessarily eat the things I cook for breakfast on the weekend. Sometimes I do if it's eggs Benedict, which is like my favorite thing in the world ever. <laughs> but most of the time I'm just cooking them for Adam and or the kids. I also sliced up some green onions and I'm gonna put those on top. I put some American cheese on top and I actually think this turned out really good. But yeah, next time you have like leftover fries or tater tots or anything like that that you have baked in the oven from the night before, I highly recommend frying them up with some eggs. So I think the most exciting thing I made this past weekend was some marinara sauce. And if you guys have been following me for a while, you've probably seen me make this before on my channel, but if you've never tried to make homemade marinara before, it is surprisingly easy. What I'm doing now is I am just scoring all of the tomatoes with a knife on the bottom, and this will be so that I can peel them easier. I'm also going to cut the um, kernels of corn off of some cobs while I am waiting for the water to boil for the tomatoes. This is going to be for some corn salsa, but I will leave a link in the description box below for the recipe I use for marinara sauce. Obviously this is a very flexible recipe and you can change it according to what you have on hand. But basically you just put the scored tomatoes in some boiling water and this obviously works best with garden fresh tomatoes. You only need to leave them in there for maybe one to two minutes and then you can take them out with a slotted spoon and put them in an ice water bath. And this just helps to peel the tomatoes. So. You wanna obviously remove the peel from the tomatoes so you can make either a tomato puree or a marinara sauce out of it. Today, while I'm making these, I'm not going to traditionally, you know, boiling water bath can the tomatoes. I'm actually just gonna put them in the fridge. But if you make large batches of this, you can can them um, in a boiling water bath and then obviously they will stay for a lot longer. Here are my tomatoes in my ice water bath. You just have to leave those in there until they are cool and then the skins peel off super easily. So basically once I peel the skins off of these, I am just quartering them. I'm taking the core out and then I am taking all of the seeds out. I am straining the juice back into the tomatoes and this is what I ended up with, which was about 12 cups of tomatoes, which made me two big jars of marinara sauce. So to start the marinara sauce, I am putting some olive oil into a big pot and then I'm just going to mince up some onion. We're going to end up um, pureeing this marinara sauce with an immersion blender. That is optional, but I like to do that because I think it just makes a better texture. Um, and obviously the onions give it a lot of flavor. I'm also going to add some garlic. So I had this bulb of garlic that needed to be used up and I'm using this garlic peeler that I got on Amazon. I'll link it down below. It is the best way I have found to peel garlic cloves. I've tried so many different options, including, you know, shaking them in a jar and all the things that people <laughs> tell you to do. None of those quirk work quite as well as that little rubber tube. So I think that is super 
useful. Um, I've been set up and put it into the pot with the onions and then I'm also adding some dried herbs. So I'm adding thyme and oregano and basil. I'm also going to add some fresh basil at the end but basically you can add any combination of those that you want. And then I like to just kind of toast the spices a little bit with the onion and garlic in the olive oil before I add the tomatoes. Now this does take quite a while to cook down. So you're gonna go ahead and add your fresh tomatoes that have been seeded and skinned with the juice and put those in the pot. You're gonna add some salt and pepper. And then I usually like to simmer this for about two to three hours. It obviously depends on how you know wet your tomatoes are, but you'll know when it's done. Basically it will cook down into more of a marinara sauce texture. And then at that point, you wanna go ahead and taste it and see if it needs any more seasoning. While that's cooking, I'm going to make some caprese salad with the tomatoes that I got at the farmer's market. So these are those kind of cherry slash smaller <laughs> tomatoes. Some of them are yellow and some of them are red. I am putting them in a bowl with some mozzarella cheese that is sprinkled with salt and pepper and olive oil. This was a really great use for these and I love caprese salad. In fact, most of my family will eat it as well. I have this fresh basil plant that I've been keeping on my kitchen windowsill <laughs> for the last couple of weeks. So I've really been enjoying that. I'm just gonna take a little bit of the basil off and mince that up. And then I'll mix that in with my tomatoes and some salt and pepper. Um, I also put some green onions in there as well and some crushed red pepper. And that is going to be a side for our dinner tonight. So you can see here, this marinara sauce has cooked down quite a bit and it basically looks like crushed tomatoes. At this point, you can cook it down as far as you like, but at this point, what I like to do is just start to puree it with an immersion blender. And this is an optional step, but if you like smooth marinara sauce, this is definitely what I recommend doing. In fact, I am hoping I can go back to the farmer's market this weekend and get some more <laughs> tomatoes to make some more marinara sauce because it was so good. Um, I'm going to go ahead and mince up some more basil to put into the marinara sauce. This part is optional. If you have fresh herbs like um, basil or thyme or oregano, you can throw those in. But obviously, if you don't have them, you know, fresh, or I'm sorry, dried will work just fine. So I have this funnel that I put on top of my jar and I'm just ladling that into my jar. This made about two, well, probably more like one and a half or one and three quarters pint jars, which turned out delicious. And you'll be seeing in a little bit what I used that for. So I'm also gonna go ahead and wash up the green beans that I got at the farmer's market as well. These take a little longer to process, obviously, than if you buy canned or frozen green beans. Um, my family does like green beans, but honestly, when I cook them, I do have to cook them for quite a long time to make them very tender. They actually prefer canned <laughs> green beans. So I did go ahead and make these um, for dinner one night, but I did go ahead and cook the living crap out of them. So obviously you can use that to your taste. So one thing I'm going to make with some of the ingredients in my fridge, along with the marinara sauce that I made from the farmer's market, along with the eggplant that I got at the farmer's market is some eggplant rollatini. So what I'm doing is I'm slicing my eggplant super thin into long strips and I will link this mandolin slicer down below and then I'm going to put these on a baking sheet and I'm going to roast them with oil and salt and pepper for about 10 to 15 minutes. If you like lasagna, this is kind of a good low carb recipe for that. While those are roasting, I'm going to go ahead and cut up some eggplant slices. These are going to be for some eggplant Parmesan that I'm making for dinner tonight. Adam really ended up liking this. So I'm putting my eggplant slices for the eggplant parm in one of my strainer baskets and I'm just seasoning those with salt and I'm just gonna let them sit there on the counter for an hour or two so the liquid can drain off. And these are the eggplant slices, again, that I'm using to make the eggplant rollatini. So those are going to go actually in the oven, brushed with oil and some salt and pepper. 
and I'm just going to roast them for probably about 10 minutes. They don't need much time at all because they are very thin. You kind of just want to get them a little bit dry. You can see there here, these are the eggplant slices for the eggplant parm after I've salted them and they've sat in that colander for a few hours. Um, and then I'm going to also go ahead and warm up some of the marinara sauce that I made. This eggplant parm turned out so delicious. I'm definitely going to be making it again soon because Adam loved it. And I know it's not low carb. I'm doing low carb right now, but honestly, I still ate it because even though there were breadcrumbs on there, the rest of it was pretty low carb. So I just went ahead and dealt with that, but I'm making a dredging station with some flour, some beaten egg and some seasoned breadcrumbs. I just season those with salt, pepper, garlic powder, some herbs, and a little bit of Parmesan cheese. And then this is super simple. So you take those eggplant slices that you seasoned with salt and let them drain, and you're gonna dredge them in the flour, egg, and breadcrumbs. And then I have a skillet with a little bit of either vegetable or canola oil in the bottom of it, and you're just gonna fry those until they are crisp on both sides it doesn't take long at all and since you've cut the eggplant fairly thinly and you've seasoned it with salt it's going to cook um, pretty quickly as well so i'm just going to turn those over and what i went ahead and did was i cooked up some bow tie pasta that i had left over it was just like a third of a box of bow tie pasta that i had in the pantry and then i'm also going to serve this with some mozzarella cheese and some fresh basil um, and obviously the homemade marinara sauce that I made, but this turned out so, so good. I have not made eggplant Parmesan in like years and years. So I went ahead and put some of the slices into a baking dish. I ladled some of the marinara sauce over the top. I put some uh, mozzarella cheese on there and I just stuck this in a 300, or I'm sorry, a 425 degree oven until the cheese was melted. And then I tore up some fresh basil and put that over the top. That turned out so good. This was Adam's plate. I just served it with some bow tie pasta and some more homemade marinara and he could not stop raving about how good it was. All right, so we're going back to the eggplant rollatini, and this was something that I made as a meal prep, and it turned out really good. So for the filling for this eggplant rollatini, I am mixing up some ricotta cheese along with some chopped spinach. I also put a little bit of cottage cheese in there. Basically, you're just making this kind of like a lasagna filling. So whatever you're li you like in your lasagna filling, you can add an egg if you want to. And then what I decided to do was just take the eggplant slices and kind of shingle them out on a baking sheet so that I could put some of the cheese mixture in and roll these up. Obviously, if you had larger eggplant slices, you could use, just use one eggplant slice and roll it up, but my eggplant was a little bit smaller, so I was making do, but it worked just fine. I'm putting these in some of these small foil containers, which I'll link down below. I really like using these for smaller batches of freezer meals and meal prep. It just works super great. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and put these in the fridge and the freezer to use later. But basically, I'm just layering some marinara sauce on the bottom. And then I'm putting that eggplant rollatini in there, adding some extra sauce. And then when I bake these, I will add some extra marinara sauce on the top. If you're doing low carb or you're not eating pasta right now, it is a great alternative to lasagna it's totally delicious and then i had some slices of eggplant left over as well so i'm kind of making an eggplant parm lasagna i guess <laughs> with those i'm layering some of the cheese in the middle i was basically just trying to use up everything that i had um, that turned out delicious as well so here are my uh, little eggplant dishes that i prepped i did put these in the fridge um, and they were super good to heat up during the week for meals Okay, so next up, I'm going to make some homemade bagel sandwiches, and I'm using some ham steaks that I got from Walmart. I'm using one of the pans that I got from Timu to make my eggs for the breakfast sandwiches for these, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to dice up my ham I'm gonna preheat that pan. And then I also used some pre-prepped peppers that I had in the fridge and I put those in the pan as well and started sauteing them. I added some eggs to a measuring cup and I am whisking those with some salt and pepper and some milk. And basically we're gonna put those in the little circular molds with the ham and pepper mixture and make some little 
egg and ham and pepper patties to put on some bagels. Adam is eating those for breakfast this week and they turned out super good. So once the peppers and the ham got a little bit of a head start, I'm gonna go in and go ahead and pour in the egg mixture. And then you just wanna let these cook on one side until they are done and then you can flip them over. I highly recommend this pan. I will link it down below. It is one of my favorites for making breakfast sandwiches, which I do quite frequently. <laughs> you guys know for meal prep, I'm taking some onion bagels and I just toasted those on either side. I got these on sale at Hy-Vee. And the reason why I love this pan is just because those eggs turn out like perfectly circular for either bagels or English muffins or whatever you're making them for. I went ahead and put those on the toasted bagels and I added a slice of American cheese and these were kind of the perfect little ham, egg and cheese, uh, onion bagels for Adam to take to work for breakfast this week. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap them in some waxed paper. So I typically like to wrap them in waxed paper just because obviously you can microwave waxed paper. Um, if you're gonna heat them up in the air fryer or the oven or the toaster oven, obviously you can wrap them in foil, but most people are gonna heat them up in the microwave. So wax paper is definitely what I recommend. All right, so again, using that marinara sauce that we made from our farmer's market tomatoes, I'm going to make some homemade spaghetti sauce. So this was a really good uh, meal for us this week. Spaghetti is something that I can make that everyone likes, which honestly, I know, <laughs> Like you guys out there that have biggie eaters, like I feel you, it's something that everyone likes. There are very few recipes that everyone in my house will eat, but spaghetti is one of them. So I'm going ahead and just getting a nonstick skillet or not a nonstick skillet, a stainless steel, <laughs> stainless steel skillet, heated up with some ground beef. Um, I seasoned it with salt and pepper and some minced onion and just some dried Italian herbs. Once that was done cooking, I go ahead and take a wad of paper towels and just kind of use that to soak up the grease. Um, I find this to be pretty sufficient, especially if it's leaner ground beef so that there's not as much fat in the sauce. I'm gonna go ahead and pour in the remainder of my homemade spaghetti sauce that I had. And then since I didn't have enough, I added a 26 ounce can of tomato sauce. And then I'm just going to season this to taste. So I went ahead and stirred this around with the ground beef. I'm going to add some sugar, salt, pepper, some Italian seasoning, and then also some garlic powder. Obviously you can season this to taste and if you don't have marinara sauce on hand, clearly you can use whatever spaghetti sauce <laughs> you can find at the grocery store. Um, make sure that you salt your pasta water when you boil your spaghetti. This will make everything taste much better. So I'm just salting that with some kosher salt and then I'm gonna go ahead and add my spaghetti. Um, I have a family of four. My kids are teenagers now and so we're pretty much feeding four adults. So a pound of pasta, you know, I don't eat a lot of pasta because I'm doing low carb right now, but I typically do make a pound because we can use leftovers obviously for lunches during the week. I'm also going to make a Caesar salad. So I am cutting up some romaine lettuce. I added some croutons that I had in the pantry, some Caesar dressing that I had in the fridge along with some Parmesan cheese. And I'm just tossing that together. A lot of times with salad, it's easier, especially if you're making it for your whole family, just to make it in a big bowl like this and then serve it out in individual bowls. That's what I normally do. Do. Here's my spaghetti sauce. I did taste that and season it to taste and I just let that simmer over medium heat until the beef was really tender. After I drain the spaghetti, I like to put a few spoonfuls of sauce in the pot with the dry spaghetti. Um, this just helps to keep the spaghetti from sticking together while you keep it warm. Um, some people add oil to it. I find that oil does not allow the pasta sauce to stick to it. So I just like to toss it with a little bit of sauce. And then this is what we had for dinner. We had our spaghetti with our homemade sauce, some good old green can Parmesan cheese on top and a salad. And that was an awesome use of our farmer's market spaghetti sauce. If you guys are considering therapy, please don't forget to check out BetterHelp. I'll have that link in the description box below. Thank you again for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.